Hello, Grown Black Folks Talk miniseries, Deadly Chattel Games. Chattel Games, games Black people play and are have played with by others in the pretense of freedom, but you, we're still using slave owner, master slave type behaviors. Chattel Games, you know, games of being free while still making using chattel maker behavior and chattel made behavior. Now, as I said in my video this morning that I recorded yesterday, this video is going to be nasty, brutish, and short, to borrow, borrow a phrase from the philosopher Hobbes. If you are in a bad mood today, if you need someone to talk to you softly and kindly, I'm putting out a disclaimer now, you probably want to go listen to something else by me. Because I'm tired of seeing us practicing the habits of slavery, either on the master or the slave side. And people do both and fail miserably because we're going to start this series with the deadly channel games of diversity. And this is why you're not going to get as far as you think you are, because look, every other group of people in this country has more capital in a, in a society that determines how important you are based on the capital that you control. No, no, no. Latinos, Asians and white folks are not about to let you play that on the highest level. No, 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 no. All of them will combine against us before that ever happens. So you may as well go through the work of becoming, of deciding, as I've said before, this is going to be our watchword. Decide now that you are not chattel, nor will you decide to make anyone else chattel. You will need to understand that because you will get checked at higher levels. If you play these games and you think you're going to go to another community, you think you're going to marry a cross and you're going to be all right. No, you're not going to be all right. Let me break something down to you real quick. Latinos, we always talk about black and brown. Okay, it's okay to talk about black and brown because there are a whole lot of people of African descent in Latin America. But if you were to sit down and talk to them, you would find out something very interesting. Latin America has a five-step caste system. Black people, negro, are at the straight bottom. It was so bad in 1865 that Confederates who could not handle their defeat could go to Latin America and be comfortable there because Half of Latin America had not yet released its slaves. They went on and became the Confederados and grew cotton down there for a little while. Y'all go look that up sometimes. Latin America is so comfortable for white supremacy that there are still Nazis living in Argentina and Costa Rica. That's the Latin world. You are at the bottom. And because it's a heavy patriarchy, for those of you who are black women, it's the bottom of the bottom. So when Latin Americans move here, that's not challenged. They can bring this thinking with them. Now, I don't say that all Latin men and Latin women are like this. I'm not saying about every individual, but you need to understand racism is not just a white thing. That idea that Europeans brought that only they are full human beings has gone everywhere. But everybody, not you, knows that they're not white. But, you know, if you go back a little while, you know, 50, 60 years, Mexicans could write themselves white. Cubans. White Cubans consider themselves white because that's the goal. And they're not going to move aside to let you up there. Asians are watching Asians colonize Africa just like Europe did. And if you go back and you do your history, the Japanese were called the white people of Asia. The Chinese are not far behind them on that. The Koreans have treaties whereby with the United States, South Korea, that allows us to be internally colonized in this country. Like I said, you wonder why Koreans have hair shops? So pretty much around the Asian world, there's a Japanese man talking about why black women are not attractive and Chinese people are colonizing Africa. So you need to understand that you're not going to naturally get respect over there. Now, they're Asian individuals. Asia is a massive, the Indians, the original Aryans, about 2,000 years ago, made the Sudrans, the darker skinned people with the genetic match to East Africa into the untouchables, the deletes. And when you see that swastika of the Aryans, there's a reason the Nazis picked that back up. I want you to understand what I'm saying. Go do your history. I'm not sugarcoating it for you today. I don't care who it offends because I can back all that can be backed up. Do not assume that other people that came to America who live like white people are going to just move over and let you up. Here's what I have learned in business. A couple of different sides of it. I'm 42 now. 20 years. In business, 
working and now in the ownership class for nine figures worth of stuff. It causes cognitive dissonance to other Americans when black people own things and can call shots when they're dealing with employees of people that they have to work with. You working with them on an ownership level and their employees and you call shots on, on resources that they will never see. They can work their entire life and they will never call shots like that. When you come in and you actually are the smartest person in the room, or let's say you don't know as much about a particular area and they don't know, you think they're going to be honest and admit it to you and show that in that area they are not superior? You think that's likely to happen overall? It is not. You go listen to Stephanie Perry or Tia San Johnson of the Manosphere. You go listen to Adelia Borashade or Dennis Berlin of the Manosphere. And if you listen to them as they talk about why leaving, why the United States of America is so abusive, one is talking about black men, one is talking about black women. Listen to anybody who tells you who's a black person who says it's time to get offshore. And you listen to what they went through in the corporate world and the world of work and the world of business. And you hear the same thing. I know black business people who gave up in my area who just broke down and told me. I did not ask to be told these stories about how different groups of people came coming in and talk, kept asking for the boss and how the disrespect was just tearing his life up. He couldn't deal with it. I thought this was unusual. But then I studied more about the nature of men in general and realized this starts in school. The reason why black boys do not tend to drop out of school earlier and also do not do as well in the workforce is because men have a higher need for respect. You deny a man respect, you deny him his oxygen for his soul. A man is not going to stay as long in an environment where he is not respected. And everything is set up to give other groups of people more sense of their value and respect for their culture and respect for who they are than Black people. And so that also sets up because this goes to the rest of our conversation about deadly chattel games. Black men thinking black women are traitors because they can put up with it longer because we're built to try to make stuff work. We have no choice because children depend on us. And that sets up black women looking at black men as traitors for not staying in there and getting the skills necessary to provide and protect for their for us and their own children. So basically now we're set up to play chattel games with each other by people who are playing chattel games with us and can do it better than we can. And you think crossing the lines to another racial group is gonna solve that problem? Ain't nobody moving aside. The more brilliant you are, the more adept you are, the more clearly, sometimes superior in ability you are, the harder you're gonna have it. Because for you to be a fully fledged, brilliant human being, people have to throw out everything they ever learned in America about who you were. And most people are not going to do it. And this is why Black people get up to a certain level and then everything seems to come together to bring them right back down. Because somebody is choosing to be right other than to acknowledge a Black person's humanity. And when you cross the line and you don't know, you end up getting smacked. And it does not matter where you cross that line. So if you think interraciality is a solution to your problems, you have invited yourself to be on the wrong end of some deadly chattel games from the entire society. So if you ever want to be respected across that line and given space to do what you know how you can do, maybe we're going to need to learn how to not be chattel and not make other people chattel so we can practice the habits of freedom among ourselves, or at least as an individual, you need to learn how to walk out of situations because you're not a chattel and you need to learn not to stay there because you're going to try to make someone else a chattel because if you try that in the white, Latino, and Asian communities, you see it. Ain't nobody about to play with us in this country. And all this foolishness we do among ourselves just reinforces their idea that there should not be an exception to the rule at their expense, individuals in the workplace and who control major resources. You just need to know that. Now, this is not every individual that you will meet, but if you are not free-minded, how are you going to be able to be in the company of those who are free-minded? So you as a black person, if you have think that of yourself as a channel and, or you think that you have a right to hold another black person as channel, I'm going to say this again. You are not free minded. And if you're not free minded, you're not going to be allowed in the company of free minded people who do not need you to be there. Jimmy Butler is a good basketball player. 
but he has been replaced in the minds of the public with Nikola. You know, Jimmy Buckets, it was all about him for a minute. The Joker, Nikola Jokic, got the job done today. So guess what the story is going to be about? And then when they're ready, and then what the next story is going to be, John Moran gets sat down for 10, 20, 30, 40 games. Do you see how even in basketball, when you think we need black people, that black men can be moved aside for a different storyline? And this is to take nothing off of Nikola Jokic. You got videos about Luka Doncic is thin, is lost weight, and the NBA is terrified. You see how these stories are going? I heard somebody say European players are just so much less trouble and they're so humble and they're so easy to work with and they uplift their teammates. They're not saying that about they never said that about David Robinson to the very end of his career. Do you understand that you can be told that you are not needed anywhere in a room that you don't own and control? And if you don't know how to make common calls with free-minded people, you will get thrown back. Do you understand? You see it. You got about five to 10 years max to figure out if you're going to be free-minded and make common calls with free-minded people across all cultures. If you choose not to do that, congratulations. You will have made your way to the permanent underclass because other people are not playing chattel games. They have a complete plan for what they intend to do to your black behind if you don't get your life together and learn how to be a free-minded person who can work with free-minded people because other people are not going to be wrong to accommodate your foolishness or mine. I've learned this the hard way in 20 years out here in business. Nobody's going to accommodate your foolishness. Other people already have their opinion. If you go up there confirming their opinion, and, and, and for those of you that know about this, you have black people in workplaces trying to prove that they belong with a whole other group of people that make life hard for black people. Those people don't respect either party in that situation. Folks are just sitting back doing documentation and waiting for that black person who's making life miserable for other people to slip up so that all everybody can get put out. Now, again, if you don't believe me, you can get it from Stephanie Perry, Daly, or Borshade, T. Hassan Johnson, or Dennis, uh, attorney Dennis Berlin. You can, you can listen to all these people talk about that. You can listen to uh, Four Cycles of Life, SPK Network on the men's side. You can listen to the Exodus Network, Stephanie Perry, Adelia Borjade, Rashida Dow, and some others who are from who are from the Brexit side. You have a lot of British black people who are experiencing the same things, who are moving out. So the deadly chattel games of diversity. I know that we revere our relatives who were involved in civil rights. I know that we have great respect for what they accomplished, desegregation, integration, diversity, rah, rah. But we're coming up on Juneteenth and it's time to start lying. It's time to stop lying to each other. If you're not free-minded, you're not going to be in the company of free-minded people. And if you're not free-minded and you don't know how to do that, nobody's going to make room for you to want to be a shot caller when you don't know how to do that. No one's going to make room for you to play pretend uh, to the second pass when it doesn't serve them for you to do that. Because other groups of people in America have already been given an opinion that is part of their Americanization. And if you just kind of tip over there thinking that that's going to be your salvation, You're not going to be that much better off than what you're dealing with already. And that's going to be the subject of the rest of our Channel Games presentation. Like I said, this is not the series in which I'm being nice about it. But y'all have a good day anyway. I'll probably only put up one of these per day. So there will be some light and lighter content to balance this out. You have a good day now. Got a mosquito or a gnat in here I'm going to have to kill. All right, bye.